All right, hi, year 12s, this is Mr. Lim again, and this is our next video on changes to temperature in our equilibrium series. Let's get going. Right, so what are we gonna be doing? We're gonna be looking at the various stuff that we've always looked at, uh, that we looked at before, but with changes in temperature this time. All right, so when you change an equilibrium system and you change its temperature, you need to recognize that the equilibrium constant changes, not the reaction quotient. All right, so the equilibrium constant is affected by temperature, which means that the ratio of reactants and products um, will actually change when you change this uh, change temperature in this equilibrium system. Okay, so the equilibrium constant, that's the ratio of products to reactants, that will change uh, when you have this change. All right, so let's have a look. How does it affect equilibrium? So let's talk about the forward and reverse reaction rates. So when you change the temperature, you are going to change both, both, both forward and reverse reaction rates, and you're going to change them in the same direction, which means that if you increase the temperature, you will increase both forward and reverse rates of reaction. If you decrease the temperature, you will decrease both forward and reverse reaction rates. All right, um, you have to be able to explain this via uh, collision theory, so it's due to the frequency of collisions and the, thus the frequency of successful collisions. So that's part of it. Okay, so it's just the frequency of collisions as well as the proportion of particles with sufficient energy, right? And that will go up or down depending on whether you've um, increased or decreased the temperature. But the main thing to recognize here is that both forward and reverse will increase or decrease with changes in temperature. All right? Uh, let's move on. Okay. Once you've recognized that an increase in temperature or a decrease in temperature changes both of them, you then have to work out which one changes more to work out which one is the net reaction to work out which one is favored. All right? So... If you have a temperature increase, okay, you will increase the endothermic reaction more than the exothermic reaction. Okay, so the endothermic changes more, and because it's increased, it's increased more, right? So it favors the endothermic, that's a temperature increase. Okay, if it's a temperature decrease, remember that both will have then decreased, the endothermic reaction decreases more than the exothermic, okay? Which then favors the exothermic reaction. A temperature decrease favors the exothermic reaction. A simple way to remember this is that whenever temperature change you have, the endothermic reaction is, effect is more affected than the exothermic reaction, all right? So if they increase, then they both uh, if they both increase, the endothermic will increase more. If they both decrease, the endothermic will decrease more. And just that you, you have to really think about it because you can't just be like, okay, it increases, therefore it's favored. No, right? You have to think about which one increased more, which one decreased more, things like that. All right, once you've worked out which one is going to go um, faster than the other, all right? which one you've gone faster than the other, then you can link it to the forward and the reverse rates of reaction by identifying whether the forward or reverse rate of reaction is endo or exothermic. Okay, so that's what's the last video, knowing which reaction is endo or exothermic. All right, um, so let's move on. All right, so determine the direction that the reaction has shifted or uh, which reaction is favored, so remember, the net reaction determines which way the reaction is shifted and which reaction is favored. So the net reaction is the overall reaction, whichever one is higher than the other, right? And then which reaction is favored. If there's a net forward reaction and it shifts to the right, it's forward favored. Uh, if it's a net reverse reaction, it's shift to the left, reverse favored, okay? Now remember, you have to work out which direction the endothermic and the exothermic is or are so that you can work out whether the forward or reverse rate of reaction was favored. All right, maybe we'll go through an example because we've got a little bit of time. So let's go through an example, all right? Uh, let's say I have reactants and products. Oops, 
reactants changing to products and I have plus heat here, okay? If that's my reaction, is this endothermic or exothermic going forward, All right? It's an exothermic going forward and an endothermic going backwards. Hopefully you've got that from the last video, okay? Then what happens if we, to this system, increase the temperature? If we increase the temperature. So first of all, we need to recognize that that means that both rates of reaction increase. Okay, that's straightforward. Then we need to remember, okay, the endothermic reaction is going to be affected more. Okay, so therefore, endo increased more than exo, which means that the endo uh, reaction is the overall reaction or the net reaction. And in this case, because the reverse is endo, then endo slash reverse is favored. Okay, and you probably have the endo or reverse is favored there as well, or is the overall reaction uh, which is going faster than the other. All right, so the idea is that, okay, both will change. Which one changes more than the other? The endo always changes more than the other. Then you have to work out which one is going to be higher than the other. Because if the endo increases more than the exo, therefore it's going to be going at a faster rate. Let's say now what happens if we decrease the temperature. If we decrease the temperature, then both rates of reaction are going to decrease, okay? However, the endo is going to decrease more than the exo, okay? So the endo is going to decrease more than the exo. So therefore, if the endo is now lower than the exo because both decrease, but endo would decrease more, therefore the exo is uh, the net reaction, or the overall reaction, and in this case, the exo is the forward reaction. Okay, so that's the idea. Both change, endo changes more. Work out which one is higher than the other, that's the overall of a net reaction, and then you work out which direction that is, forward or reverse. Okay, let's move on. Um, changes in rate, so remember, uh, the changes in rate will uh, changes in temperature change affect both rates of reaction in the same way and both rates of reaction will have this Both reactions will have their final change as the same direction as their initial change. What does that mean? Um, even if it's not favored, right? If there's an increase in both, they will both increase at the end. All right so uh, the temperature increase the endo is favored or the overall net reaction, but both rates of reaction will have a final increase or an increase in the final rate of reaction, right? So whichever reaction is favored does not indicate that it is increased or decreased. What indicates that whether it is increased or decreased? The change in temperature, right? Changes in yield determine which one is the net reaction. Okay, so work out what's the overall reaction. Then work out, okay, if the overall reaction is forward, then there's gonna be more products than reactants. If the overall reaction is reversed, then there's gonna be more reactants than products. And you can work out the yield of various substances accordingly. Okay, uh, and then finally, how it affects equilibrium. Okay, so, the idea is that once you've worked out what is the overall net reaction, you can work out whether there'll be more reactants or products. Once you've worked out whether there are more reactants or products, therefore you can work out changes to K, okay? Changes to K, remember, is a ratio of reactants to products. I think it's actually products, but it should probably say products over reactants, all right? So, probably better to say ratio of products to reactants. So, if you have more products, the value is going to get higher. If you have more reactants, the value is going to get lower. And so therefore, you can work out the change to the K value depending on the yield of the reactants and products, or whichever there is more or less of. Okay? And therefore, you can work out the change to the K value, and that's it for this one here. All right? We'll go through over this in class. We'll see how that goes. Adios.